In this video, we'll be looking at the multiple choice questions from at Excel Chemistry Unit 2, International Advanced Level, the year 2016. Question 1. How many molecular ion peaks are there in the mass spectrum of 1,2-dichloroethane? And we have these isotopes. More importantly, the isotopes of chlorine. We have either 35 or 37. So, dichloroethane, C2H5, or rather C2H4, Cl2. Now, the isotopes, there's only one type for carbon, there's only one type for hydrogen. So 24 plus 4. But for chlorine, we have options of 35 and 37. So there could be a combination where one of them or both of them are 35. That will give us one pick. We could have the option where one of them is 35 and one of them is 37. That will give us a second pick. And we could have the option where both of them are the isotopes of 37. So that gives us a third peak. So there are actually three possible peaks, molecular ion peaks present for 1,2-dichloroethane, right, depending on the combinations of the chlorine atoms. Number two, four compounds that contribute to global warming. Right, we have carbon dioxide, methane, dichloro, difluoromethane, and sulfur hexafluoride. So which of these molecules is polar? Right, it might be useful to know the shape, geometrical shape of the mo molecules. So carbon dioxide, CO2. Carbon dioxide is linear. Right, two lone pairs, zero lone pairs, so it's linear. Although the bonds are polar, but because it's linear, the polar bonds cancel each other out. So overall, right, it is non-polar. For B, methane. CH4, right, there is not much difference in the electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen, so the bonds are not polar, right, so this is a non-polar molecule, it's tetrahedral in shape. For C, dichloro, difluoro, so two chlorines, and two fluorines, right? Now, the electronegativity, uh, electronegative difference between chlorine, uh, carbon, and the halides, there is a significant difference. So the bonds are actually polar. And between fluorine and chlorine, fluorine is a much more electronegative atom compared to chlorine. So there will be an overall dipole moment in the direction of fluorine. So the polar bonds don't cancel each other out in this uh, in this molecule. So C is a polar molecule. Let's check D, sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. Right. All these bonds are polar between the sulfur and fluorine, but the bonds, the symmetric uh, nature of the molecule, the bonds will, polarity will cancel each other out. So overall, this is non-polar for sulfur hexafluoride. So the only polar molecule here will be C.
right back to the four compounds again which of these compounds is emitted in the largest quantity by anthropogenic activity human activities right the, among all of them this is the background knowledge carbon dioxide right, due to the burning of fuels this one will be the emitted emitted in the largest quantity to part c four compounds again these four compounds which compound or this compound de depletes the ozone layer to deplete the ozone layer you will need to have chlorine atoms right so for dichloro Fluoro, right? This the chlorine, the carbon, and the fluorine bond will not be the ones that is broken, so this will be this will be safe. But it's actually the ones between the carbon and the chlorine bonds that will be broken, and then the chlorine radicals will be released, right? And that will go on to deplete your ozone layer. So even though you have fluorine atoms, they will not deplete the ozone layer. These are chlorine atoms that. Are responsible here. To part D, which of these molecules have an octahedral structure? Right, as we went through in two part A. So let's do a quick ge uh, molecular geometry again. Carbon dioxide is linear. Methane. is tetrahedral dichloro difluoromethane is also tetrahedral the one that's octahedral is sulfur hexafluoride So imagine this four to be in a plane, right? and then we have one fluorine on top and one fluorine below. So this is the octahedral structure. Option D. Which of the following is a tertiary alcohol? So tertiary alcohol means the carbon that contains the hydroxyl group is joined to three other carbons that's the tertiary alcohol so let's look at the four options a penta 2 or so five carbon the hydroxyl group is on the carbon number two and then there's a methyl group on carbon number four one two three four right i've left out the other hydrogen just for to make it a bit neater so this carbon is only joined to two other carbons so this is actually only a secondary alcohol b penta 2 or same thing 2 or hydroxy on the second carbon and the methyl group is on carbon number three. Right, again, this particular carbon is only joined to two other carbons. This is also a secondary alcohol. Right, let's look at C. Penta 3 or so the hydroxyl group is on carbon number 3 and the methyl group is on carbon number 2. Right, so this carbon that's holding the hydroxyl group is joined to two other carbons. This is also a secondary alcohol that leaves us with D to be our tertiary alcohol. But let's check and make sure. D 
D, penta 3 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, hydroxyl on the third carbon, and the methyl group is also on the third carbon. So this particular carbon that's holding the hydroxyl group is joined to one, two, three other carbon atoms. And this is the tertiary alcohol that we are looking for.